Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and we can at least start in a word of prayer and then we'll get into, because we have a lot to do tonight, let's open a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your guidance and your strength in our, in our life. Father, we ask forgiveness of our sins. We fall short of your glory. And as we study your word and just recognize the depths of the word, we recognize how infinite you are, how, how far you are above us, and yet you desire to, to live among us, to dwell among us, and we don't deserve this, Father. So this time as we study, as we seek to get kept, caught up and, and to, to do a workshop tonight, I just pray that you would give us strength, you give the students insight, may you grant perseverance for the students to complete the tasks that they have, um, that you, you've given to them this semester. May everyone finish strong and complete the assignments that are due. It's in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Okay, so welcome to, this should be our, our 11th session, and just bear with me one second here. Session number 11, Structure Analysis Part 3, Inter-Sentence Analysis. And so we're going to be finishing the inter-sentence analysis, and we're going to be working together like we did last week. And I hope that you brought some paper and some pencils and some pens uh, and were able to print out the things that I mentioned. If not, I still hope that you can learn and you can do some of that later. So just a quick overview for tonight. So what I first want to do is, but while we're still waiting for more people to come in, we have... We have some more now, but while we're waiting for some more people to come in, I think we have six right now. I'm going to go over grades and assignments. I could be so we can discuss where we're at. Um, we can go over some things, and um, I hope everyone's going to get caught up. And so we will. We will do this. We will finish strong. Uh, we'll also um, not really discuss. We'll, we'll kind of review the handouts. We'll also review Romans 1, 16 and 17 that we did on Sunday night as well for those who weren't here. We will work on Romans 3, 19, 26. And then um, I, I'm not 100% sure about these two because I might just have you work on your own passages. So we might just do that. But possibly we might work on one or two of these verses for, for, for additional practice. Uh, we'll just wait and see. So at this time, before we go in, because we're still waiting for some people to come in. Okay, so what I, this is what we did before. I just want to review it. I think everyone, you, you've been in Christianity 101, so you were either, you were either here on Sunday night or Louie and uh, Larry were also here on, uh, on Sunday night. So, so this is an intra-sentence analysis, okay? And so... What we're essentially doing here is we're looking at significances, uh, structures, and relationships, and, and they're going to give us theological truths. They're going to give us uh, various significances that we will put before the reader. We will highlight these truths be before the reader. So just uh, not belaboring the point. So for example, here, we talked about this being a state here. It's not an action, but a state. And a positive way we could write this would be um, positively am confident. So it's saying the opposite. Okay. And so then we're just, we're just looking at these different structures in relationship to the handout that I gave to all of us. Okay. And just reviewing here, the purple, uh, the purple color highlights um, describing verbs. So the purple, it kind of matches. Purple is a related color to red, right? And so purple is always connected to the, the, the verbs, okay? So you would have this coming back to here, all right? The light green, the light green is highlighting, this is connecting, so this is a, like a, a light blue, I should say not green, light blue. This is connecting, describing 
essentially nouns. Okay, so it's going to be describing the subject, the gospel, like that. Um, and then the object is typically the one that's receiving the action. The, the subject is the one that's doing the action. Okay, and then the, the green, these are really, these are connecting words here. The green is connecting words. And the, and the green is connecting, it's connecting sentences. Okay. And so these are just the relationships. So you're going to be making these same type of connecting, uh, these connecting, you're going to be doing the same type of thing in your specific passage. And again, I don't want you to be stressed because we're thinking through this logically. We're asking what is the action word and what kind of action word it is or what kind of verb it is. We're asking who is the actor. The actor is the one doing the action. The object is receiving the action. The purple is describing those nouns. I'm sorry, it's describing the verbs. The light, the light blue is describing the nouns. And then the green is connecting between sentences. So it should, it, it, I, I don't want us to be overstressed here. So just really re repeating what we're, do, what we're looking at here. The, the blue, this is the, this, is, this is the actor or the one doing the action. The red is the verb, or oftentimes the action itself. It's not always an action, okay, but typically it's an action. So that's why we're, we're really highlighting a verb. And then the, the, the orange is the orange is the object. This is the, the thing. This is receiving the action. So that's it. So you have the purple is describing the action. The light blue is, is describing the nouns or the objects. The blue is the one doing the action. The object, the orange is receiving the action. And the red is the action itself, okay? So this is really a big picture. Uh, this is a big picture of what we're doing in the intro sentence. So don't be, don't be scared. It's not, it should not, be that, that, it should not be that stressful. And then you have specific categories in, within the handout, okay? Any questions or comments or that, that's making sense to you? Any questions or comments? Pastor Tim. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, when we're gonna sub when we submit it, we have to use colored pens. So you 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 do not have to if you don't have. Ideally, it would be better if you could. So if you if you were to do um, if you could get coloring pens, that would be best. But you do not have to if you don't have if you don't have um, colored pens. So. If you don't have colored pens, what you can use is, if you notice here, the, the orange has a dashed line. So that would tell me it's an object after you mark it. The action has a double red line. So even if you didn't have a red, I would know that, okay, she's identifying, or she's identifying that as a, as a, as a action. The, the actor has a single solid line. That would tell me. Now, if you don't have colored pens, what I, what I want to recommend that you do is use parentheses for purple and then use, use parentheses for, for purple to highlight so I know what you're doing. And then for, 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 for the, the light blue, use a, a bracket. 
okay? And then the connecting, the, the connecting words, the connecting words you should be circling, okay? Now, if you notice up here, you also circle like the by, the from, because those are also connecting words. The, the from and the for and the by, they're actually, so for example here, just to, to, to think maybe a little more grammatically, uh, this from is connecting this word with this word. So from is a connecting word. The for is connecting this word with this word, okay? So in, in, in a sense, the, that's why I'm also circling the from, the, the prepositions, the bys, the fors, the twos, even the who, because again, the who is connecting, this is connecting this word with this idea, okay? So, but, but we're not using green because, because this word is not connecting two different independent sentences. The green is exclusively for independent sentences. So as long as, so as, long as this word is contained within these two brackets, I understand, I know what you're referring to, okay? So, so if you don't have colored pencils or pens, you can just use this nomenclature, okay? Brackets for describing nouns, parentheses for, uh, parentheses for, uh, parentheses for describing verbs. You can also, if you're doing this in a doc, go ahead, sorry. Um, I think uh, it is better for you to require, require us to have that um, colored pencils for us to follow what you're doing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I highly recommend it. I'm just not going to require it because there is an expense. And, like, right now during the crisis, I'm trying to keep expenses to minimum. So, I will not require it, but I agree with you, Mark, that it, it's like – Unless, if you're, yeah, so if you have extra money, I really recommend they're not, you can just use color pencils. They're, you can buy a pack, for maybe 100 pesos, 50 pesos. So yeah, I agree. We should really use that. Um, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to like 100%. So, but I agree that it, it should be, yeah. Good. Any other questions or comments? I hope this is making sense. And one thing to think about, if you, because I was looking at a lot of your questions and observations, a lot of your questions, when you actually do a study like this, will be answered. <laughs> many, many of your questions that you ask will be answered in the word studies, they will be answered in the, in the intra and then the inter-sentence relationships, okay? So a lot of the questions that you have will be answered. Go ahead, Danny. Uh, can, can you send me again the updated version of the intra sentence? Uh, what, I, what I have here is the old copy. Yeah. I, I think you have come up with an edit, uh, upgraded version. Yes. I cannot find in the hermeneutics page uh, your latest uh, edition. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I will send that. Okay, cool. All right. So I think that, ma that makes sense. So what, what we're going to do is we will practice. Um, actually, I'm not going to require tonight after we go through this. If you want to start tonight, if you want to start your assignment, I will split you into groups and you can start working out with your specific passage. And then you can ask questions with each other. So if you're stuck somewhere, you can, you can, ask, you can ask each other. Okay. So um, unless you want me to do another example, if this is making sense for you, once we're done going through the three steps, I want to go to the other two example, the other two procedures, because that'll be for us. This is assignment number eight. Once you complete that assignment, number nine is the inter and then assignment number 10 is the exegetical. So, so, um, uh, yeah. And once we go over this, I want you, if it's okay with you to start doing your homework so that we can, uh, 
unless you want to do another practice. I can do another practice. It'll, it'll be up to you. Okay, so let's go on now to the next uh, assignment number nine. So now, now we're dealing with So now we're in the inter-sentence relationship, okay? So now we're in the inter-sentence analysis, okay? So we're, as we looked at all the different parts of the sentence, here we're taking a step back and now we're looking between sentences, okay? So, um, uh, for this assignment here, it's actually very simple for your verse because your verse is only maybe two verses or three verses or one verse. All you're doing is you're looking at the inter-sentence handout. You're going to be identifying the type of sentence. You're identifying the type of sentence, and then you're identifying the relationship between the sentence. Okay? So all you're doing now is you're just looking at the sentence itself. So you're looking, you're looking at literally this sentence here. And then you're also looking at You're asking, how do these two sentences relate, okay? So I'm giving you a key right now. For the type of sentence most often, now it's not always the case. Some of them, like a warning, you're going to have to think more logically. But in this example, the type of sentence, you're going to apply the, the verb. That'll give you the type. The action is, the, the, ver the verb is the clue as to the type, and then the, the conjunction is the connection for the relationship. Does everyone see that there? So this is typically the case. It's not always the case, but typically it's the case. All right, so you're looking at the verb, and then you're looking at the conjunction, okay? So assignment number nine is actually very simple. It's not a lot of work. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. Okay. All right. Now, the, the next thing we're going to do, now we're moving from these two relationships. We are now moving into the, the last step, which is uh, the exegetical outline and exegetical summary okay so once you're finished with this you are getting so you're getting close okay uh you're getting close okay so now um i'm not requiring this uh this is a, this would be a third step before the exegetical outline but if, if you notice here what 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 I've done is, we talked about this on Sunday night, this might be new for Larry, but we have set, separated out all of the, all of the, the it, there's two types, there's, uh, there's, there's independent and dependent clauses, okay, and these, these each contain, the main thing is they have a verb. Okay, so looking at here, I've identified the different verbs. 
There's six verbs here. And, and, and the verb that is the independent thought is, is fully indented to the left. So this is telling me, if you can imagine, we, we looked at this before, if you can imagine a house here, Um, or even better yet, just, just imagine, right? Imagine, uh, the spine, the spinal, the spine here, that's the backbone. Okay. So imagine here, f farthest to the left is the backbone. Okay. Farthest to the left is the backbone. And then these are indented because they're dependent, okay? So this one is dependent upon this, and this one is actually dependent upon specifically here. Again, this is indented and this is indented, okay? Because these are dependent upon the previous statement. Uh, this, this cannot stand alone. It has to be... In order for it to make sense, it has to, it has to be connected to here, okay? This cannot stand alone. It, 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 it's, it's, it has to be connected to everyone. Who believes? Everyone. Everyone who believes, okay? Any questions or comments, or is that making sense? This is somewhat re review. This is review for most. We discussed this on Sunday night. Larry and... Uh, Larry and Louie, is that making sense, what we're doing here, or are you lost? It makes sense, Pastor. Okay, good. Okay, great. So, yeah, so essentially what we're doing is whatever the independent sentence is that stands alone, that's all the way to the left. And then you have a dependent clause that's going to go further in. And so then what we have here, essentially, if you can imagine, it, you have, this is like a major point where it contains the major idea. And then you have, you have uh, two sub points, okay? Major point, and then two sub, uh, um, you could have two sub points here. Now, actually what I like to do is I get my main idea here, and then I actually have, I have three sub points. I restate, I have a summary here, and then I, I restate this, this, and this, recognizing that this is the, that's the foundation, okay? So if you, so, so if you look down here at my outline, it's actually very similar. So let me read my outline that I've prepared. Paul's confidence in the gospel. So that, this, is, this is like my summary statement, okay? And I'm getting that from, from this idea. Okay, this is my summary here. Same thing for here. I'm getting, I'm getting my summary for this major point from here. Okay? Or I may be looking at something even more broad. So, so looking here, Paul's confidence in the gospel. But then what I do here, you don't have to do this. I just like to do it. I restate the specifics in here, here, and here. So I'm going to, to restate them in my own words. So number point number one, the exegetical uh, statement is Paul is confident in the gospel. That's what Paul's saying. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm just restating it in my own words and making it very clear and concise. Paul is confident in the gospel. Point number, point B why is, so we're asking, we're answering the question here, why? Because that's what Paul gives us. The why is, is, is found here and cause, okay? So what we're saying is, why is Paul confident in the gospel? So then I'm going to, I'm going to state it in a sentence. The reason for his confidence in the gospel, so you can see here that this is really the foundation. I'm just explicit. The reason for Paul's confidence in the gospel is that it contains the power of God, which is specifically for our salvation. Or you could say salvation generally, okay? Maybe I'm, I'm already homiletical. 
So maybe you don't want to have hour yet, okay? So that's the second major point, and, and you see it clearly here. So this is, the this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the overall, this is where everything is found, 116, okay? And then I have point number C. Point number C says, the only condition for anyone, the only condition for anyone receiving this salvation is faith, okay? We're going to make this more concise later, but right now the, ex the, the, the exegetical statement is the only condition for anyone. This can be explained as uh, Jew and Gentile. So I'm already answering the question for anyone. The only condition for anyone receiving this salvation is faith. Okay, so I'm, I'm already, I'm giving an exegetical conclusion, and it's, and it's still structurally founded, okay? Then point number two. So not, point number one is Paul's confidence in, in, the, in the gospel, and then point number two is the foundation. The foundation for, for confidence in the gospel, okay? So if I'm looking at foundation, I'm running, this is going to be the climax here. So number one, uh, point number A, God reveals his righteousness in the gospel. So that's why Paul, that's why Paul can boast in it. That's why Paul can say it's for salvation, because God is revealing his righteousness in the gospel. Okay? Where is that righteousness found? It's found in the Old Testament. This is at the end of the day, what I'm arguing for is the foundation. Okay? You could also say, you could also describe this as an explanation. I'm fine with that. I use foundation because I do think coming back here, this is, this is a cause. I do think it's a cause. All right. Any questions or comments or that makes sense how I'm, I'm, I'm creating the exegetical outline from, from, the, from the, the text? Everyone's tracking with me? Mark, go ahead. Yes, sir, Tim. Uh, is there a time where the independent clause is below, right below the dependent clause or the process is still similar, always similar. So, so now, yeah, so there could be a time where you could have a condition. So you could have, um, you could have, so you could have technically in the text, you could have a conditional statement here. You could have the condition and then you could have the main clause. So actually, the condition is dependent. So if I'm, if I am, so that's, this is what the text will look like, okay? The condition will come first, and then you'll have the main clause. Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. The condition comes first, okay? But that's not a problem because that's just the way we say. I say to Carmichael, if you clean your room, you can have a snack. If you clean is the condition for the main clause, you can have a snack. But you can't have the snack until the condition is met, okay? So if I'm doing an exegetical outline, I would still have, I maybe you want to say something like uh, the, the way into the kingdom, okay? And then you could have, um, I would still put the main clause here. Main clause condition. All right?
Because remember that this is like a summary. And then inside is, is how you unpack it. Okay. So you still have to have, even though the main clause is the main, it's, it's really where you're going to find this main point. You still have to unpack that idea. You have to unpack it somewhere. So that's why you do it as, as point number A. And you could also have one and two here, perhaps. All right. So there's many ways you can work this. All right. But once you understand that structure, your outline becomes so clear, it becomes so easy. And, and uh, you know, it's gonna take practice, but, but even for me, when I'm preaching, I, I can do all of this kind of like, just looking at the text within a half an hour. It can be, or even 20 minutes, it can be quick. So at first it's gonna go very slow for you. It's gonna be tedious, but the more you practice, if you commit to, to doing this every time you preach, every time you teach, it will become easy for you. It will become second nature. You will just look at the text and it will just unfold before your eyes. Henry's an engineer, uh, Danny's an architect, right? You go to the building, you go to the, you go to the field, you go to wherever it is, and you automatically can imagine the problem being solved, right? You can see it. The same thing, the same thing is, is here with the text. You will eventually get to a place where you just see it unfolding before your eyes, okay? Now, um, uh, coming back here, I did, I did everything at one time here, all right? When, uh, for, for the class, I want us to go through the process. So I want you to, you're gonna submit three assignments. You're gonna send, submit the intra, intra sentence, once you're done with that, you're going to do the inter sentence. This is all I'm looking for, okay? So really, the inter sentence, it's, it's only gonna be probably maybe six or five or four. It's not gonna be that much. It shouldn't take you that long. And then for the exegetical outline and summary, you're kinda of gonna combine everything, okay? So you'll do it again. And then, and then you'll also come up with the exegetical outline. And then let's look at the summary here, okay? So the exegetical outline is how the text is unfolded. The exegetical summary is you're going to write the summary in your, so this is, this you could also say is a summary or uh, uh, it's more than a paraphrase, but if you wanna think of it more of a paraphrase, you can. If you're dealing with a bigger text, it can't be a paraphrase. You can't. But if for this, maybe you want to think of it more like a paraphrase. So let, let's just read what I have here. Paul declares his confidence in the gospel because the gospel contains God's power to save us from his wrath. And the, and the only condition to receive it is through faith. Okay, so I'm summarizing. I'm also explaining. I'm writing it in my own words. All right. The foundation for this is to be found in the Old Testament scripture. God reveals his righteousness through faith, and this has been promised in his scripture. Okay? So does everyone see how I am writing it in my own words? Okay? If you cannot write it in your own words, you don't have a good grasp on that word. Okay? If you can write it in your own words, you feel good about it, then, then, then you have confidence in preaching and teaching it. Uh, Pastor Kim, that's... Exegetical summary comes before the outline or outline first? The I would, summary. Yeah, I would do the outline first because the outline sets you up to be, do the summary. The summary will be very easy once you have, if you have the outline first. If you do the summary first, it's going to be, do, do the outline first and then you're just adding the components into the summary. Yeah. Great question. So do the exit, do this first and then summary second. Now, I want to say this to you, and you can see it. In the New Testament, moving from exegetical to theological to, to homiletical, it's like, oh, you're just changing very little. It's so easy, okay? This becomes more important, and it's more in-depth when you're moving from Old Testament, exegetical, theological, homiletical, okay? So if you're in the New Testament, 
it's very easy. The other thing I want to say before we take the break is that I know there's so many different steps and processes, and I was actually thinking about this this week. Um, if you're doing an expository preaching, you're preaching through a, 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 a book study, if you're, if you're, if you're preaching regu regularly, then all the steps become a lot easier, meaning to say that the background study, the context study, if you're preaching through the book, all of those studies, you only really have to do it once. <laughs> once, you get, once you get set up in a book, those studies are kind of, you don't have to do it every week. So that is another benefit. If you're a preacher and you're preaching, instead of going topic, instead of going from one text here or there or, or else, if you're going in a book study verse by verse, you really save a lot of time with a lot of those earlier studies because once you do the background study, it's done. You don't have, you don't have to do it again. You already have that information. So I would just highly recommend, highly recommend doing book studies if you're preaching regularly. If you're in a church and you're like preaching in, in, in a team, I would recommend you just doing a, a book study where you're, you're each preaching a different, you're just moving step by step. But I would just really recommend that because it'll save so much time um, and you can really focus on, on these aspects. Uh, once again, I lost track. The kind of uh, exegetical, and the last one is uh, homiletical, okay. the, the second one. Okay, so, so let me just come down here. So looking at outlines, you're going to go from... Uh, exegetical so think about so so think about that okay so in in like for example Hebrews Thinking about let's just Hebrews Hebrews chapter one one to four, the exegetical is almost the homiletical <laughs> because the author of Hebrews is teaching theological timeless truths. You almost can do that if you're if you're look if you're looking at um, Exodus fifteen, the the song. The Song of Moses, you've got to go there before you can go there. This is, this is, you cannot, you cannot. And then looking at the theological outline, you also need to consider Christ through this. Okay. Is everyone tracking, tracking their, tra tracking with me how sometimes it's just almost a one-to-one. -one. It's just a one-to-one. -one. Other times, you really need to you really need to be diligent about moving from exegetical to theological and sifting through the the time bound, uh, the shadow, the shadows, the types, and then moving to the eternal. Okay, and then contextual is going to be different. You're looking at a U.S. context, you're looking at a Filipino context, and then even here you're looking at you're looking at yeah, Messiah. Messiah. <laughs> Messiah, you're looking at, you're looking at, um, you know, well, you. Manila, <laughs> Tagalog, maybe Tagalog context. All right. Context right. of the right. year and the old. How about the age? Is you're there an age context? What, what was that? Age. Yes, no, absolutely, absolutely. So then you can even do, do age. Yeah, no, there's, uh, so we, we could talk about generational, generational. Generational. Yeah. For senior citizens even, and for... Even social, even social as well, right? There's, there's so many different things. And there's so many different things. So that's why, that's why, listen, again, I know there's a lot of steps. I know maybe it's like, how can I do this every week? Again, I, I, I just always want to come back to if you have that big picture in mind, when you get stuck somewhere, something isn't making sense, you have that full blueprint to do a, a, a good job. 
okay? Otherwise, you can just really be lost. Um, all right, it's, it's 7.05, let's take a break. Okay, let's go ahead and let's do one more example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screen share and we're gonna do another example here. So let me, here is the example. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give uh, spacing here so that I can, I can diagram each thing. So I'm just going to, for the, for the first structure analysis, what I'm going to, for, for, the, for the intra, the intra sentence analysis, I'm going to first, all right, so what I always like to do is just to start out here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to I'm going to space these out so I get some space to work, okay? So I put 3 if you're looking at spacing, I like to put 4 spaces between, 3 inside. You don't have to do it, but that's what I prefer. So I'm just I'm separating out by commas, I'm separating out by punctuation and commas, okay? So if, if you're trying to follow what I'm doing here, so my recommendation for you would be to do the same. So just look at the punctuation and separate out by the commas, okay? So that's the first thing I'm gonna do, okay? <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the, the verbs, okay? So the, 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 the next thing for interest sentence, I always go, I try to go verb, subject, object and then the describing words and then connecting words last so that's typically what i do okay so i'm going to go so if you're look if you're looking for a procedure what i would do is number one So first, I'm going to separate out the sentence. Second, I'm going to look for the verbs. Third, I'm going to look for the actors. Fourth, I'm going to look for the objects. Fifth, I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at describing words. And then six, I'm gonna look at the connecting words. So connecting words are last between sentences, okay? All right, so just looking here, what are the verbs? Right off the bat, I see a verb appeal. appeal. Okay, I appeal, all right? I'm not going to identify the type of verb yet. At this point, I just want to identify the word appeal, okay? Next, I'm looking here. There's a second verb, is, okay? Coming down here, I have do not be conformed. So, this is one verbal idea here. Do not be conformed, okay? Does everyone see why I, I just, it's one verbal idea. Do not be conformed, okay? Looking further down, I can see this be transformed. And even though this is a connecting word, I can tell that it's, there's a relationship between these two, right? Do not be conformed, but be transformed. All right? And then you have this may discern. May discern and is. 
So everyone sees the different verbs here, okay? Any questions or comments or that makes sense? Do, what are your questions? Okay. Now I'm gonna come back up here. And what is this word appeal? What is this word appeal? Okay. So, so I'm going to look up Step Bible. So we're going to go to Romans 12. So if I were you, this is how I would do it. So, so now let's go to Romans 12, 1 and 2. I'm going to X out of here. So let's just font size, make it bigger. So I'm going to look at this word appeal. Appeal means it, it, it's, it's to ask. To plead, to comfort, to plead, to exhort. Okay, I'm sorry, you can't see. So can everyone look at this to ask, to beg, to plead, to comfort, to encourage? Okay. So, so this is a, a statement. This is a request. This is an encouragement by the actor. So looking here. Uh, we could say one option could be this could be an this could be an action. This could be uh, a request because he's he's desiring he's he's asking of us to do something. Okay, so. I'm, I tend to think about it being more a request, okay? But you could have it as an action in the sense that, in the sense that, um, in the sense that he's saying something, right? So that, that to, to speak, to say something is, is a form of an action, but I'm gonna leave it as a request, okay? The actor, of course, is going to be here. The actor is here, and this is going to be Paul. Let's ask a question. Who is there an object? Who is the object? Anyone? Someone want to give me the object? God's mercies. Object? No. Your technique, you. Your. Yes. Think about who is the one receiving the action. Who is the one receiving the action? If you say object, we're asking the receiving the action. So that would be correct. It's the it's the you. It's the you. Um, this is the object. And if you're going to be specific, this is a person. How about the brothers? So great, great question, right? What is brothers modifying? Danny, what is brothers modifying? The you. I mean, yes. So, so we can say, describing things, describing. Yes, so two options here, clarifying or describing. And I like describing, description. I, I like description, okay? I like that. I, I'm giving two because those are two legitimate possibilities that you can choose, okay? So sometimes it's not black and white, but I like what Ray, I think that was Ray. Ray, did you say that? Yeah, me, yeah, it's me. me. Both, yeah, good. I like, I like description. I like description. So brothers is describing the you, okay? 
Now, um, Henry, by the mercies of God, let's think logically right now. There are two possibilities for identifying this word, by, this phrase, by the mercies of God. How do you think? What is this relationship here? Think logically. You have mercies of God. What would be a relationship that would make sense here? The, the word itself by that refers to the means theme, right? Yes. Yeah, so it, number one, a very legitimate option, Ray, would be means. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So one option could be means. Means, yeah. And I, and I tend, you know, I've gone back and forth on this. I tend to like that. I like that. I appeal to you, brothers, by the means of, by the mercies of God. It's through the mercies of God that you are able to do what, you, what he's going to ask you to do, okay? So, so let's think here. So let's, let's go ahead. Let's leave it as means. One other possibility, maybe you want to have calls, but I do like this. Let me check. Let me check. Let, let's go back to Step Bible. Let's check something here. Let's see what they have here. By. Yeah, so it should be, it should be means. So if, if so everyone look here, okay? You see here? So if you're unsure, uh, you could go to my handout to look at this, but you can also use Step Bible. So if you notice here, I click on Step Bible here. And, and look at the options here. Look at what it gives. Genitive, uh, through by means of. Does everyone see that? So this is why. This is why. This is why. Uh, Ray said what he said. Great observation, Ray. Now, if you went to my handout, you could also see that. By is a key word for, for uh, means. Okay. So does everyone see what we did there? So we're actually confirming Ray's conclusion. Okay. So genitive of means. What was that? Sonny, go ahead. Uh, I, mean, I was saying that it's a genitive of means. <laughs> I just yes. took it away. So. Yes, yes, yes. So we're in a good spot here. So I'm going to erase this. And what we're going to do here now is... I'm going to, to circle this. That's the connecting word. That's the key word. And this is means. So notice that. Think about that. It's only through the mercies of God that we're able to do what he's going to call us to do. <laughs> so there's no, there's no source of pride here. It's the, the, the means by which what he's going to request is a big request, okay? But it's only through the means of the mercies of God that we can do what he's going to do, what he's going to request us to do. Now, notice here, it's a little bit tricky, but, but he's going to ask us, there's a, a verbal idea here, but it's an infinitive. This is really a second object. Okay? So the, the first object is you. The second object is an action. So when he's appealing, think logically here, okay? He's appealing, he's appealing to us, okay? And he wants us to do something. Is everyone tracking there logically? He's appealing to us to do something. What is it that he wants us to do? 
to present. Present. Yes, exactly. So he's, he wants us to present our bodies. So th this, is, this is getting a little bit, this is getting a little bit deep here, okay? It's getting a little bit deep, all right? You're having, you're, we're gonna have four objects, okay? But just think here, it, it makes logical sense, okay? So what he's asking us to do now is, uh, he wants us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So it's a little bit technical here, but there's a third object. Okay, so it's kind of a little bit, uh, he wa he's asking us to do something with our bodies, namely that we would present them as a living sacrifice okay so we're to present them as a living sacrifice and then what is how how is this related to the rest what is the relationship Uh, transition. What so what I'm what I'm what I'm what I'm what I'm asking for specifically, Danny, is we're asked to be we're asked to to present our bodies a living sacrifice. How does how does the, how does this relate to this to this to this? What is what is the relationship? How does holy and acceptable relate? It describes. It describes. It's not, it, it, Danny. Sometimes it, it, don't don't think beyond. Uh, don't think too. Uh, sometimes it's not too deep. Okay, so excellent job, Kaya. So just think for a second here. We have these words, holy and acceptable. Okay, they are describing. The sacrifice, and really it's coming back to, um, because it's also coming back to our bodies. Our bodies are holy and acceptable. So really you could say our bodies are, because really this is also describing sacrifice, right? These are adjectives. So our bodies are to be living, a living sacrifice. They're to be holy. They're to be acceptable, okay? Um, our bodies are being holy our bodies are to be a living sacrifice, they're to be wholly acceptable. And then there's, there's another, uh, what's the relationship to God now? Where are our bodies to be directed? Is this not also an object? Yeah. So, He's asking us, we, he's appealing to us as brothers. What is he appealing? Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Well, what kind of living sacrifice? It must be holy and acceptable. To who? To God. <laughs> so there's, there's some sort of holiness that is not acceptable to God. <laughs> yes, there's a living sacrifice that is unacceptable. There is a living sacrifice that is not holy. Is that what you're saying, Sonny? Yes. Yeah. So think about this. We can, we can, we can be masochistic. We can, we can suffer. We can be religious. And yet our living sacrifice is not holy and it's not acceptable. Who presented a sacrifice that was not acceptable to God in the Bible's big story? <laughs> See, no. Cain. Cain. Right? Cain. Oh, my goodness. And then we have here, how does, 
how does this relate? Look at your handout. What word is the key and how does it relate? State. Okay, it's there there is so this is this is a state here. That's good. So my question though is what's the relationship between this and the previous clause? Description. Yes, excellent. Excellent, Sonny. So look here. The key word is this, which, and it's a description. Now, Sonny, you're on deck. What is it describing? You can think logically. What do you think it's describing? What is your spiritual worship? The act of presenting our bodies. Yes. So think about which is your spiritual worship that is describing this whole, this idea here, this presenting bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Okay. Now, uh, there's one other word and we can just highlight it here, therefore, and this is functioning as an inference. You can look it up in the, uh, in your handout but my question for you is do you feel overwhelmed or do you feel like yeah I can do this what is your feeling Danny what's your feeling I'm overwhelmed you're overwhelmed I know it's hard it's hard but Danny can you at least can you do you at least see how did you I know that it's overwhelming, but did you understand how we came to the conclusion? You understand. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, so don't be, don't, don't be stressed because um, in one sense it's overwhelming because it's like, wow, it's a lot. But in another sense, the important thing is that you understand if you can understand what we're doing, that's the most important. The, the, the practice will come. The practice will come. Okay, the, 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 the good job will come, okay? All right, now, I think the second sentence might be, the second verse might be easier, okay? So, looking at your handout, do not be conformed. Do not be conformed. Look at, so now we're looking at, again, intro sentence. What is do not be conformed? Someone give me the type or the type of verb that do not be conformed is. It's a command. It's a command. Okay. It's, you're very close, Danny. If you put command, I would give you either full credit or partial credit. Um, command in in the in the handout is positive. Okay. So we have included. Ah, uh, yeah. Prohibition. Yes, prohibition. So always think, if there is a negative, it's a prohibition. Now, how is, how are these related? Look at, look at your, look at your handout. How is, how are they related? Do not be conformed. The object, uh, this word, to this word. Do not be conformed to this world. The object of conforming is this world. Yeah, so I would, I would allow that possibility. This could be, I would accept that because you're saying we don't want to be conformed to this world. What's another possibility? Looking, looking in at describing verbs. So I would accept, I would accept the one option. What about what's another option? Looking at de describing verbs. Does someone have another option? Is it location? 
do not be conformed to this world. To the world. Location. I think it's reference. Okay, so so one possibility was location. But then if I so that's a possibility, but then Ray yeah, said a uh, reference, and I like that even better. So does everyone see why reference is really is a really good option? Yeah. To this word, yeah, that's a, it's a reference. Do not be conformed with reference to what the world. Don't conform yourself with reference to what the world okay so i would accept i would accept object because it's very close okay and location okay i i hesitate for location because it's because we are in the world so yeah. I, I i i upon thinking we couldn't do location because we are in the world yeah so we wouldn't want to do that but 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 Kaya, that's a what, that's a good option at first, especially with because you're looking at this two word. What I would say is, when when I'm doing this, I always have several options, and then I pick the best one. I pick the best one. I typically will look through all the options, and then I'll pick the best one. So, so definitely, definitely reference. I think is the best. Um, I would accept object. I don't think it could be location, but that that's a good guess because. The two word references location. Okay, good. We're getting it. We're getting it. Okay, so um, uh, now who is the actor here? Who is the actor? You're, you. Yes, Danny, you're getting it. You is the actor. So this is implied. It's implied in the command. So you are the actor. Do not be conformed. But, so I will, I will change this to a connecting word. What is be transform? Someone else. Larry, what is be transform? What type of word is that, Larry? Fun. Yes, you got it. Excellent. We're getting it. Be, but be transformed. Excellent. And um, someone want to tell me now the relationship between these two? What is this signifying here? What is that relationship? Someone want to try and look at the connecting words? It's a contrast. Contrast. Yes, contrast. You guys are on top of it. I'm liking it. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah. Okay, uh, good. Now, by the renewal of your mind. It's the method. Huh? Means, means. means. So, so someone said method. That's great. Method. And really method, yeah. referring to uh, means. Excellent. The by is the same. And so it's the, it's the means. By the renewal of your mind. So... <laughs> The transformation of our minds. The transformation of our minds. So our, our ability to overcome the world is not to allow the world to affect our thinking, but to, to, but to transform our thinking outside of the world. Think about that for a second. Think about all the different worldly influences that affect our thinking. Now, I'm looking down here. I'm going to highlight this. This is a clause. What is the key word that connects here to here? What is the key word? That. That. That, that is the key word. Now, what is the relationship from here? Look at your describing. Describing verbs, what is a common 
Be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern. What is that? What is that? Um, means. That means testing. Okay, okay, okay. So so let's let's take two steps here. So yeah, so let's so manner thing. Hold on here. So so Danny is correct here. By testing, this could be a means here. Did you say manner, Ray? Manner. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's better for a, it's it's probably a means is better there. The, the, the means the, the means would be better here. But I'm thinking right now here, so let's go back to this that. Did anyone look up keywords for that? What type of connection does that often describe? Result. Okay, it could be result for sure. What's another option? Reason. Okay, uh, but that really isn't for reason. What's close to result? What's another type? Uh, toward something like progression. Movement. Not progression. What about purpose? Yes. Purpose. Ah, uh, yeah. Purpose. I so the difference between result and purpose is in actuality. Okay, you you probably want to write this down. The difference between purpose and result is actuality. The, it has not been realized yet, so I want to emphasize purpose. Be transformed so that. So another way to write this, you could say so that. Or um, uh, in order that, for the purpose that, for the purpose that you may discern what is the will of God. What is the will of God? Now, what type of action word is this? Participle. Okay, so that's grammatical, and that's, that could be a grammatical answer. But I'm just thinking, remember the action words or the, the verbs in your intra sentence uh, handout? Design, another mission. Hold means. on, Ray, Ray, what is Statement. Sta okay, statement. Okay. Uh, method or means discern. Yeah, like but investigate. Is it request? So, it, so let's let's think here for so so first let's go back to Danny first. Danny, so this is a this is a a, a verb or an action word. So it could not be means because means is in the describing portion, okay? So let's let's come here first. Let's go back to, let's go to the handout. Let's go to the handout. Okay, so let's go back to the handout. So it's in the red, so it has to be, it has to be in the verbs, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start going from, and I'll highlight the ones I think it could be. So first type, action, it's the prop, the process of accomplishing something, typically the accomplishment of a task or aim. So could it be an action that you may discern or de let's, let's, let's change this word to, what if we put determine? Could it be an action if we put determine there? No, no. Okay, it couldn't be a physical action. Could it, could it be a mental action? No. Okay, so. No, it's more abstract. Oh, no, no knowing. You're saying knowing. You're saying knowing. Okay. Knowing. Yes. Okay, so. Yeah, I like knowing. I like knowing. That's a good one. That you may know what is the will of God, that you may determine what is the will of God. Okay, so what, I, what I'm going to say here is I think the two best options are action or knowing, and I really like knowing, 
action in the sense of a mental, the mental action, okay? But I actually really like this knowing here. I really like that option. Because you're, so you want to substitute. That by testing, you may know what is the will of God. Let's, let's look in Step Bible to see if, if that's a, a synonym used here. To prove, actually, to prove. What was that? To prove. I, I can't hear you, sorry. To prove. Testing. <laughs> Sonny, go ahead. Testing, sighing, exam examination. Yeah, let's, let's look here. So, discern is not that by testing. Um, for the purpose of testing what is the will of God. Yeah, so um, examine, examine. Yeah, so um, so this would be a weakness of going, of looking at a translation first, the Greek. It's just not present in the yeah. Greek. So, so again, yeah. It's it's fine. So what I what, I, what I'm going to stick with what I, I I think we can go with no, just because we're doing an English. It's not perfect, but it's it's close enough. So I like this close that you may that by testing you may know what is the will of God because that's the goal, right? The goal is to know the will of God, right? The goal is to is to know the will of God. Okay, is everyone tracking with me? I don't want to be. I don't want to stress you out. Is that making sense for everyone here? Okay. Is anyone stressed? <laughs> Why do they want to be stressed? Actually, the will of God and the perfect. Yeah, just to add that. Yeah, to, to know what is the will of God. Okay, and so. The object, of course, we're looking at English, so it, it, it's not the exact same structure in Greek. That's fine. It's, we're still dealing with semantics and not um, literal syntax, if that makes sense. But Sonny, you can just, you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, I think Sonny earlier theme about to prove. Yeah, to prove. Actually, that's the that's the um, the literal meaning of the text. Yeah, that we may prove. What is good? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. It's, that you may, yeah. So, so let's even look, look at the word prove. Examine. Examine. Yeah. So, but again, what is this? What does this really mean? It means to know, <laughs> because it's a knowledge statement. Your goal is you're trying to determine what is right. So this is. What is you're trying to determine what is the will of God, right? The will so, of God. Even using the literal Greek prove or examine, you're examining, you're proving so that you'll know. This is uh this is a knowledge, a knowledge claim. Mm -hmm. Is everyone tracking with me here? Done, right? You don't have to agree with me. Do you, do you see where I'm getting this stuff? Do you, do, you, do you see that? Uh yes, yes, sir. So, yeah, so uh, I, I really like this no. I really like this no. It's not, we're, we're, we're dealing with the, 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 the final meaning of the text, which even though it's slightly different in English, that's the goal. Because, because the object is this what? what the will of God. What, what, what is the will of God? Yeah. What is the will of God? And then that will is... That will is right, good, acceptable, perfect. Perfect. Okay. So this would be a this would be description, correct? Description. So, how do you feel? A little less stressed? Do you feel a little better, Danny? You got some good yeah. ones. You got some good ones. You feel better, right? 
I, I want us to see that this is, it takes practice. It takes practice.